It's the final day of the championship and we have no idea which way it's going to go. I'm Craig Savage. Next to me is Charlie Betts and down below is Daniel Cody. Let's just get to the league table right now. At the top, Leeds are promoted champions. Congratulations to them. They're on 90 points at the moment. For a second place at the moment, it's very tight. West Bromwich have been in there at the moment. They're on 82 points. Brentford just behind them who slipped up. Both teams slipped up at the weekend. They're on 81 and Fulham they're on 80, so Fulham need to rely on Brentford and West Brom to lose both their games. Uh, in the, also in the playoffs, West, uh, not in Forest, they lost to Barnsley. They are there on goal difference uh, if they lose. Cardiff are also in uh, sixth place on 70 points. They uh, only need a point, both these teams. For Swansea, need both of them teams to slip up, only three points behind. At the bottom of the table, though, is where it gets very interesting. At the bottom of the table is Hull. They are on 45 points. Barnsley in uh, 23rd on 46 points. Luton Town on 22nd and 48. Charlton outside the relegation zone, they're on 48. Birmingham and Middlesbrough both on 50. But don't forget, we're going to have got a 12-point deduction coming up. So at the moment, they're, on, they're in 13th place with 58 points. With 12 points go, they'll be on 46. And that takes Luton out of the relegation zone. Well, one more twist, Sheffield Wednesday could potentially get a point deduction. They're on 56 points themselves, so who knows what the EFL are going to do with them. As we get on to these final predictions of the season, it, let's get to the first game. It's Birmingham City versus Derby. I'm going to start you off with Charlie Betts. Um, sorry, yeah, I don't know. Birmingham had a, bit of a, they had a bit of a lucky, obviously, thing against Charlton. Lost the press and again, gone back to their, their form before. Derby, ugh, nothing to play for, but then I, I honestly, honestly can't call it. So on that reason, I'm going to go kick off this, what should be a, a stupendous last day of football with a boring one all draw. Cody? Um, well, I think that sentiment of I don't know how to call it is going to be continued throughout <laughs> here. I think we're going to be far more brief than usual because as last week proved, where we got pelters for predicting all the top teams and chasing Pat to lose, they all lost pretty much. So, you know, there we go. Um, the fixture, I'm not sure, mate, to be brutally honest. I'm going to go for a Derby win because Birmingham have been atrocious since the restart. So, 2-0 Derby. Yeah, I agree with Derby winning, to be honest. Birmingham have been absolutely terrible. Uh, we said this for many weeks, Birmingham have been terrible. They've, well, I said they were out of it last, last week, but back in it again this week. And I, I think they're going to have to rely on results around them for other teams to lose. So, I think Birmingham will lose this one 2-1. Next game, big at both tables. Brentford, who slipped up at the weekend against Stoke. They're playing Barnsley, picked up a valuable three points against Nottingham Forest, a 93rd minute winner from Schmidt. Cody, stop you. Well, you know, I'm just going to say, Craig, the <laughs> comments that you made when I predicted Stoke won Brentford nil and the actual result, you know, that's all that needs to be said. Um, and a couple of people mentioned it in the comments as well. Um, but hopefully... And this is so hard because I'm a Luton fan and I'm trying to think with my head, but I can't let it over all my heart here. I need Brentford to win. The last day is normally better for the teams at the top. So I am going for Barnsley's dreams of the 93rd minute stay to be shattered as we're recording. They're going to lose 4 0, Craig. Oh, wow. Oh, can I, can I add to that? Brentford will finish second. Well, we'll get to your prediction, West Brom, in a bit. But, uh, Charlie. <laughs> Yeah, I think, um, you, you know, I think we, I, we sort of mentioned about maybe Barsley sneaking a result against the Forest. I don't think it'd be that late, but I think um, Brentford, I suppose maybe the game against Stoke was it, like you mentioned, almost the, the pressure of the result the night before. Again, going back to this week now, I think there's a bit less on them. You know, West Brom get a win, it's irrelevant, isn't it? So they can probably, probably, play, probably, speak, probably play with a bit more freedom. So I do think it'll be a Brentford win and a, not as resounding as 4 0, but I'm going to go 2 0 Brentford. So I think Barnsley were flashing a pan today, unfortunately. The weird thing about Barnsley is they've actually played quite well for the last two games. Well, obviously, they, they deserved to win against Forest, and they, they were unlucky not to get anything against Leeds. Uh, but I think Brentford, obviously, you said about pressure, and I think, that, yeah, I totally agree with you what you said, Charlie. There'd be more pressure uh, for the Stoke game than it probably would be for this game here. But I think Brentford will with this one 2 0 as well. So, yeah, well done, both of us. Uh, moving on to Bristol City. They're playing Preston as one of the games that is pretty irrelevant. I will start this one off and uh, I, don't, I don't really see much in this. I don't really care. It's pointless. So Bristol City are going to win 2-1. Uh, 
Charlie? Um, yeah, there's nothing to play for. I'm going to be, I'm going to apply Dan's logic to this, that there's nothing to play for. Teams are on holiday, defensive mishaps, left, right and centre. I'm going to go for a whopping three-all draw. Just for the pure drama of last day in the sense of nothing else to play for. Teams just go completely gung-ho, three-all. Well, to be honest, we, we so I'll get the college prediction in a second, but we did say about the, the there hasn't been many frills, or and then we had two, four, threes at, at the weekend. I know, which is absolutely nearly. Ridiculous. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Cody. Well, there's been some interesting things from both of these clubs at the weekend. Um, Preston had some interesting post-match comments from Alex Neal, which came out of the surface. Um, and Bristol City, by the time of this game, could have either the Cowleys or Nigel Pearson in charge, in theory. So I am going to. Put my, my thoughts on Danny Cowley having the job by then, being in the stands, and Bristol City respond. 2-1 Bristol City. <laughs> I know that's a, an extraordinary sequence of events, but we've seen worse this <laughs> utter, weekend. Utter drivel there. Utter <laughs> drivel. I, 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 to be honest, I, I don't think Bristol City will actually try and get... Well, there won't be any in the stands this week anyway, but... Because it's the last game. What's the point? They've got another month or so off until the new season starts in the EFL, which we don't know when it is going to be yet. Anyway, uh, next game is Cardiff City trying to secure that playoff spot against Hull, who are utterly useless. Um, Cody, we'll start with you. Oh, we both watched I mean, the game. Yeah, I mean, Hull, we're going to debate whether they had a shot on target or not, but to they the didn't. stats, they didn't. they didn't. To the stats, they didn't. And even if they did, they had one. It wasn't great. So let's be honest. Um, Hull were poor. They, they weren't as bad and they solid they were solidified compared to their 8-0 defeat, but they weren't great and they didn't look inspired. But it's the championship, it's the last day and it could all go wrong. And to be honest, a win doesn't keep Hull up realistically. So, no. I, I don't know. Cardiff, there's a lot of pressure on this game. The fact that it's Swansea who would take the place if the results <laughs> transpired that way, I think that's going to make it nervy. And I know this seems the most ridiculous outcome in the world, but I got a few last week. I'm going for nil-nil. Are you trying to tell me how we're going to keep a clean sheet? Yes. <laughs> Charlie, because I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to keep quiet. Bite my tongue. Remember what you said about Stoke Brentford? <laughs> Charlie. Yeah, no, I, obviously I didn't watch the, the whole game, but I think for everything that you, you'd read about it, um, it's a bit of a shame because I, I did, I did uh, share it with you boys. There's like a thread that someone's written on um, Twitter about the whole demise of Hull. And it is actually quite, you know, I think I was quite scathing of them a bit last week. And actually, when you put it all in context, the club's been through so much, but they're still not going to get a win this weekend. Uh, sorry, it's Wednesday, which is what we're talking about. Um, I do agree there'll be a bit of pressure. I think it'll be a win for Cardiff, but I don't think it'll be pretty. So I'm going to go 1-0 Cardiff, a ground out 1-0 win. Well, it's not like you two to keep it a low score and then me give it a high score in one. But uh, Cardiff, uh, yeah, Cardiff, we want to get confidence going into the playoff, uh, into the playoffs itself. Uh, with a, well, it'd be tough anyway because we could potentially get Fulham, West Brom or Brent. We don't know. Uh, but I think Cardiff will easily win this one. Hull were terrible. And they were, they're, they're a team with no confidence. Team, the young squad anyway, not in, I say not in it. I, I said last week, I feel sorry for the fans. I feel sorry for the players. Grant McCann does look a bit out of his depth now. Um, that's why the protest is outside the ground at, uh, on the weekend. So I do think Cardiff will easily win this one 3-0. Don't think it'll be that clear cut, honestly. Three <laughs> nil. <laughs> Moving on to the champions of the championship. It's Leeds United, fully deserved. We did say they'll get promoted by this time, and they were doing this next corner, and we were, I was right. Um, they're playing Charlton, who picked up a valuable point against Wigan in the 90th minute. Lots yeah. of late goals. Lots of late goals uh, recently. Charlie, starting with you. Now, on paper, this looks quite a sticky one because obviously Leeds are champions. It's not even like they've got a play to win the title now, which maybe as a Luton fan is a bit of a, a bit of squeaky bum time in that sense. The only thing I would say is even when they went behind today, Leeds still then were a dominant sort of force. Um, I don't know. I think it'll be a Leeds win. I think, you know, as much as Charlton, you know, scored two against Wigan, we can talk about Wigan a bit later on, but maybe not the best defensively, obviously score a lot of goals. But I do think that maybe flattered Charlton a little bit. Um, so I'm going to go for a Leeds win. That's obviously a good result for Luton Town. However, I'm going to put a caveat on this. The way this week has gone with football, it wouldn't surprise me if it did go the other way. But I'm going to go Leeds 2-1. Uh, 
I agree with you on the scoreline of 2-1 to Leeds. I think this, this will be the party. Obviously, they've celebrated the last few days of promotion and the, uh, win the league. But I think, obviously, now doing it at home, you want to win the game at home for the trophy presentation, etc., etc. Charlton, I, I thought Charlton were healthy, to be honest. I thought Wigan would win on the weekend. They didn't. Fair play to Charlton to get a last-minute equaliser uh, from McCauley Bond. But... <laughs> Relegation battle, this, as I said, no one's relegated yet. There's six teams in it. I'm expecting loads of twists and turns on this on this Wednesday night. I really do. I think Charlton will take the lead. I really do. But I said Leeds, I think Leeds will come back to win 2 1. Cody? Um, I've sort of gone for the same sentiment of you, which I think Charlton will take the lead. Macaulay Bond's on, doing really well recently. Obviously, stepped up from the National League, but uh, it's the one I'm really worried about, if I'm honest, as a Luton fan, because Yes, Leeds got through today quite well. Against Derby, there was always that little bit behind the scenes and the adrenaline probably got them through the two-day piss-up, if we're being honest. But I worry after a few days what the effects of that might be and whether there'll be a few tired heads and a few aching limbs. And I can't see it's as clear-cut. Even though Leeds have won five on the back, it should be easy. It should be. And I know this sounds ridiculous, but I'm going to go one all. The thing is, I, think, I don't think Marcel will be able to let them, like, Wrestling in the laurels, I think they'll, they'll, they'll get, they want to get as many points as possible. So uh, this is myself and the LCB talking about here. I hope you're right, Craig. I really do. Strict man. Uh, speaking of you being worried about Luton, they are playing Blackburn Rovers at the Kenworth Road. I'm going to stop challenging this one. Um, oh, I don't know. This is one of the stickiest ones to call because all, all joking, like allegiances aside, it's not an easy one even as a neutral because Blackburn, although got nothing to play for, put four away at the weekend. Admittedly, they conceded three, but still, do you know what I mean? They're, they're scoring goals. Luton, um, home record defensively is maybe not as strong as you'd like it to be going into this game. I, I don't, it's, it's such a tough one. I think, I think Luton will have enough about them to get a draw. I don't think they'll win the game. Whether that will affect, you know, obviously we've spoken about permutations of how that could work out. I think it'll be a draw. I think it'll be a fairly high score in one of two all. How that then leaves the state of play after that, who knows? But I'm going to go two all. Cody. Um, I've gone for exactly the same result. It's going to be probably one of the worst nights of my life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the worst two hours. I mean, that last 10 minutes against Hull was enough for me. But uh, Blackburn, they're scoring goals. They're one of the top scorers outside the playoffs, actually. Only Queen's Park Rangers got more than them. Um, but they can see goals. Luton haven't won a home game since the restart. They've drawn most of them. So all the logic points to a draw. But the last day isn't going to have logic. But I've got to go for it anyway. 2-2. Two, two. I had faith them for Luton against Huddersfield. I had, did I have faith, faith against Hull? Yes, I did. I had faith for them to get something against Hull. And I am faith again they're going to do something against Blackburn. Um, oh, God, this is really tough. <laughs> no, to be honest, I, I, I know. Do you, do you have faith, Craig, or do you want to have faith, is the question. It's oh, tough because Blackburn, they've got nothing to play for. And that could be amazing for Luton or it could be the worst thing that could happen in the sense of, you know, the, the mentality of Blackburn. Isn't it? You could, as Charlie said to whoever, what team you said earlier, both being on, like, on holiday or that stuff. Um, no, I, I have faith. I have faith in my team. If he starts the while the while this Wednesday, I think we've got an incredible chance of obviously surviving. Didn't think we were going to say at the start of those predictions. No. Uh, no, no. Nine games ago. But we're we are very close. Luton are going to win two one. Sluga's going to save a penalty. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> I don't know that I can take that. <laughs> Last minute save penalty. Luton survived. No, I'm joking. Sluga will save a penalty though. Um, anyway, moving on. Millwall. They're playing managerless. Oh, Huddersfield. Danny Cowley got the sack. We are very surprised. Going to start with your thoughts, Cody. Um, in terms of the sacking, I think we've all discussed this earlier. We're all agreed it's basically mindless. Whether or not he's the man you wanted to go forward with next season, sacking him with a game to go when he saved the club from basically a, a, a position where some thought they may be doomed. He's come in, he saved the club. It's not harmed his reputation, and I think he will get the Bristol City job, if I'm being honest. Um, but it, that, it was a really bizarre one with a game to go. I have no idea why that timing is as it is. They backed him in the summer. I said it, I think, a couple of weeks ago. I thought they'd be up by the playoffs. So it's a bit of a strange one. But um, what can you say? How do you know how Huddersfield are going to go now? Millwall have got nothing to play for because it went wrong the, 
the, the week before for them, losing 4-3 at QPR. And that's the first game with goals I've actually been involved in in a while. So I, I really don't know, mate. So I'm going for a, a thriller. I'm going for a thriller. 3-3. Three, three. Charlie, thoughts on Danny Kelly getting the boot? Um, it's not much. It just it's In terms of right or wrong decision, the timing. And we've said this a few times this season with other managers who've been sat. And um, after that result. Yeah, obviously beating West Brom and stuff. I just, yeah, the timing of it is just bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. So that's all I want to say on that. In terms of the game, I don't know. I, the vindictive part of me hopes they get a good hiding off the back of this because just to prove a point that they shouldn't have sacked him. But I can't say, you know, emotions aside, um, I do think there'll be a lot of goals, but I think they're only going to go in one direction. 3 1 Millwall. Yeah, the second really surprised me. Um, not, yeah, I do believe that he's done a good job. He kept them up. Uh, Huddersfield have been an absolute mess for the last year now I know they're in the Premier League last season but uh, Jan Schuert wasn't the right man in charge of, um, back in the last season and uh, to be fair the, the Cowley has done their job they kept them in the Championship but they're saying their style of play is not good for what they want why hire them in the first place because we all know what they're like at Lincoln that uh, and, that, and it's no disrespect and it's no disrespect to the Cali Barrows on their style of play because obviously Big Sam's done it in the Premier League and that's been it for going around for years Anywho um, whoever they um, uh, employ next, probably Lee Johnson, because if he's going, to, if the Cowboys are going to Bristol City, Lee Johnson's going the other way. No, I'm joking. I don't know. They're not hiring at the moment. But you could wait till after Wednesday. It's one game to go. They are safe. We got in a game against Millwall. Both teams got nothing to play for. Millwall blew it at the weekend, losing 4 3 to QPR. Uh, Huddersfield obviously saved the beat West Brom. Uh, I, I just think Millwall are going to win this one 2 0. I really do. I don't, I, I don't expect anything. Really, uh, next game is Forest trying to solidify their playoff spot, playing Stoke at the City Ground. I will start this one off because I, I think Forest will be fine. I really do. They only need a point, but I think they'll get three. They'll be really disappointed uh, with their performance against Barnsley. Uh, Barnsley totally dominated the game and uh, got what they deserved and lost. Uh, so, but I think Forest will bounce back and win this one three-one. Charlie. Um, I don't know. I, I'd worry slightly about Forrest's mentality. And the reason I say that is, is Stoke under Michael O'Neill have, have been a lot more, you know, um, put a bit of a, not run together, but, you know, they've been resolute. I know they've got a, a, a good hiding against Leeds, but, you know, Leeds have had to a few teams. Michael O'Neill clearly has a good influence on them. I think he's a good manager next season. I think they'll be OK, actually. I think they'll do quite well in the league. That aside, I do worry about Forrest's mentality of losing a 93rd minute winner to Barnsley. I, I just think the pressure, if they're, I know they only need a point, Go there and defend, but I don't know. I think I think it'll be. A, I don't know. My, my uh, I'm going to. I'm going to go for it. Stoke two one. I just think that they might bottle it a little bit with the the pressure and Stoke uh, have, have put goals past you know some decent teams recently. Okay. Um, I think this is going to be another one of those tight, tense games. I mean, conceivably, I mean, everyone, no one's really talking about Forest dropping out. But if Cardiff get a result, then Forest would be sixth if they don't win, and. If Forest lose by, it's only a five goal swing to them to Swansea, which is two or three evil in either game. So it's going to be tough. Yeah. Stoke are one of the top scorers since Michael O'Neill took over in the leagues. Oh, it's, Forest it's haven't won in five, you know. I just had a look. Forest haven't won in five. They've, they've drawn a few, but they haven't won in five games. Last one was the beginning of this, um, July. So, and that's the thing for me is, do I go for a for a draw or a or a defeat? I'm not going for a Forest win. That's the one thing I'm certain of. Stoke won three of the last five. They've only lost one. Oh. I've got to go for Stoke as well. And I'm going to go for the same scoreline as they beat Brentford by 1-0. And hopefully I'm right again. Uh, you mentioned Swansea just now. They are playing Reading at the Majeski. Do you think Swansea will have enough to make the playoffs? Charlie? I think it'll be tight. <laughs> go on, Dan, you go first. Oh, oh sorry, all right. Anyone, just speak. I, I didn't expect you were going to say a name at the end of it. I did. You spoke at the same <laughs> time. I think I think Swansea I think Swansea will win. I think they'll win comfortably, but I think, you know, given the previous predictions, I think it'll be in vain because I do believe that Cardiff will get a, a result. So, you know, that's um, irrelevant. Can they still catch Forest or or not? Yeah. Yes, some goal difference. If <sighs> Swansea win and Forest lose. Yeah, no, so I think Swansea, you know, they're not they're not the worst attacking team, you know, if depending on the, the goals that they need on the results as they're coming in. So I think Swansea will win. I'm gonna go three 0 Swansea. Uh no, I well. Yeah, I agree with you on, on Swansea winning. I, I do think they'll win this one. 
but I don't think it'd be a high scoring one to be honest. Um, yes, I think unless Cardiff lose, I can't see Swansea in the. I can't see Forest dropping out of the playoffs. I really can't. And I, yeah, I really can't to be honest. Uh, but Swan Swansea will win this one two one. Cody. I mean. I don't know, mate. It's so hard, isn't it? Well, I, I just need you to pick a scoreline. Uh, just, just go for anything. It don't matter. It's not, like, to, it's not like one of these teams are trying to make the playoffs or anything like that. I want to make drama, but <clears throat> I want to be realistic. Here's my prediction, OK? Swansea are going to race into a 2 or 3 nil lead and Reading are going to come back 3-2 Swansea. Well, that's just... OK, all right, moving on. Uh, I want drama. <laughs> There's enough drama at the bottom. <laughs> anyway, uh, speaking of the bottom, uh, Sheffield Wednesday, who could potentially get a points deduction, either 9 or 12 or 21, I don't know. I'm just making numbers up. This is the EFL. How about 30? <laughs> How about 30? That'd be lovely right now. Um, <laughs> Sheffield Wednesday, they're playing Middlesbrough, who are not safe yet. They're pretty much there, but they could still get relegated. Um, Neil Warnock effect is good away from home. Sheffield Wednesday uh, are absolutely useless at home. I've gone for 1-1. One, one. Charlie? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just applying a bit of madness happening, you know, results flying in. I mean, Middlesbrough have got to be desperately unlucky to go down now, given the position they're in, in terms of, you know, permutations. Of it requires Wigan to win an appeal, essentially. That's well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, but uh, Warnock away from home has been strong. But this will be in the back of Wednesday's mind, this points deduction. So I think they're going to come out all guns blazing. I think Middlesbrough hit me on the count. I go one nil up. But I think Sheffield Wednesday will pull two back. Two one Sheffield Wednesday. Sheffield Wednesday have only scored about 13 goals at home. But their survival can potentially depend on this. So they're going to go throw the kitchen sink. Two one. Unless, unless the EFL decide to like, you know, tell them that they've actually been given a points deduction or something like that. Why wait? So after they could have done it by now. It's been months. <laughs> anyway, uh, Cody, your prediction. Um, I predict that we'll have a breaking news special on Tuesday of what's happening with Sheffield Wednesday. But aside from that, um, Sheffield Wednesday, I mean, they did take that approach, all guns blazing against Fulham, as they, but it took them to go behind to do that. And they ended up, you know, letting him five, which wasn't great. <laughs> Middlesbrough, Middlesbrough were poor at home again, to be brutally honest. In the, in the Neil Warnock derby for the second time in these predictions, it didn't go to plan. So... <sighs> It's the hardest one to pick. I'm going to go for 2-1 Middlesbrough. Big game at the top. West Bromwich Albion. They slipped up against Huddersfield. They're playing QPR, who got a point at Luton, but they got three against Millwall. Coach, don't with you? Well, I predicted a slip-up. I didn't predict them to lose, which was bizarre. But there we go. I mean, I've, as I've said, I think Brentford will finish second. I think West Brom will, will draw. Uh, the reason for that, I mean, the Slavon Bilic post-match press conference was bizarre at that time. Really was bizarre. And it concerned me, to be brutally honest. Um, and the main reason I'm saying this is because I've got to be consistent with my predictions. At the start of the season, I said Brentford would go up and I didn't say West Brom would. So I've got to predict Brentford to go up. So as a result, West Brom will draw. It will be a thriller, 2-2. Two -two. Charlie? Well, I probably need to eat a certain amount of humble pie because I said that QPR can't score for Toffee since the lockdown. And they put <laughs> four away against, you know, on uh, on Saturday. So, I I don't know. We're, we're a bit of freedom, you know. I mean, all the pressure's on West Brom. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, there is still a lack of a, 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 an out-and-out -out striker for QPR. I know they scored four, but do you know what I mean? It, that, they're really relying on that easy to, to, to keep them going. So, I don't know. Billis is a good tactical manager. Well, if, I think if you stop Eze, you probably stop QPR. But I, I don't know. There's a lot of pressure on him. I'm, I'm going to put my trust in Bilic, and I think he'll sneak a 2-1 win. But it could easily go the other way, if I'm being brutally honest. And genuinely depends if QPR turn up. And we said that all since this lockdown. Was done. Um, hmm, I did predict West Brom to go up, didn't I? I said I believe in Bilic, and I believe in Bilic again. Um... <laughs> No, I think West Brom win this one. I think they I think if they get an early goal, West Brom, I think they'll settle the nerves and then get that second goal. I think they'll get the second goal uh, before half time. Uh, but West Brom will win this one 2 0. And the final game of this final game of final games 
of the league season is Wigan Athletic, who obviously still got that 12 point deduction. We don't know yet. It's under appeal. They're playing for them, who could potentially still sneak an automatic spot. Charlie, it's not with you. I mean, I genuinely, this one I could close my eyes and throw a dice at this and just try and come out of numbers. I, I, can, we, I, can we try that? It'd probably be closer to the prediction I'm going to give. Um, I don't know, because, I mean, Wigan are obviously, you know, we've discussed that at length, what's going on with them. I mean, the fact is, people aren't really giving Fulham loads of a chance of getting through to automatic promotion. So does that give them a bit more freedom? Do they settle for the playoffs? I, I don't know. It's almost like the Football League want Wigan out, but teams around them want them to stay in. I, I don't know. It's tough. You just think you can... I, I can't... Uh, two all. Two all. I bottled it. I'm sat on the fence. I can't call it. Two all. Cody? Well, based on actual logic, I've got to the same outcome um, because Fulham haven't lost in five. They've won four of them. Wigan haven't won in four. Uh, haven't lost in four and they've drawn two of them. So how can I predict a team to lose? And that's all I'm going to ask to anyone who disagrees in the comments. How can I predict one of them to lose? Unfortunately, a draw isn't enough for Wigan because they won't win that appeal because it's getting worse and worse what's going on in the background. Separately, as we've discussed, what needs to happen is the EFL need to sort themselves out after this. But unfortunately, Wigan, as much as I thought they were going to do it when they entered administration, I don't think they will. I think it will be a draw. I'm going to have to go for one all, I'm afraid. How can you not pick a team to lose? Well, I have done that. Um... <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have. Um, have you decided I, which one yet? <laughs> I did. I actually have wrote this this scoreline down, and um, no, I, oh, I, I might change my mind. No, no, I'm sticking with it. I'm sticking with it. I, 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 if Wigan won on Saturday, I would have tipped them to win to de- on Wednesday. Agreed. I was say, yeah, they're fine. They got the twelve points enough. I, I think they'll be high, away in the way. Uh, however. That, I think that draw might just knock a little bit of confidence down because there's more pressure because you're still thinking about the 12 points in the back of your mind. Yeah. For them, on the other hand, for them, just got to play the normal game. Just forget, forget West Brom and Brentford. Don't worry about them. Just, just play as you normally do. They scored five of the weekend against Sheffield Wednesday. All right, yes, they conceded three. But it's not the point. The point is just, just play your normal game. Get, just get that three points. It doesn't matter. Don't. And then let the other teams worry about who they play. Sorry, QPR and let Barnsley do their jobs, which I predict they won't. They won't. So, but I think Fulham will win this one 2 1. Just. And those are our predictions for the final game, league game of the championship season. Do you agree with our score lines? Let us know in the comment section down there. Give us a like, share, and subscribe. And you can follow us. On Twitter, at Honest Football Free. See you next time.